Okay, a circle. The area of the circle is pi r squared. Okay, now remember, pi equals approximately, look, this is what we do, equals approximately 3.14. It doesn't equal exactly 3.14, right? That's like, it actually equals like a much longer decimal that never ends, okay? Now, let's talk about the formula, and then we're also going to talk about how we use pi in our <coughs> calculations. So here's a circle. The radius is this distance, okay? So that's this distance. Now, what I want you to be aware of, look, the radius here, look, here's pi r squared. I'll just use r for, um, I'll use phi for r. But look, if I want the radius of this, look here, this is the diameter. If I'm given the diameter is 20 yards, that's this distance all the way across, that means this radius is 10 yards and this radius is 10 yards. So just be careful, right? Here the radius would be 10 and you'd plug in 10. So what does the formula work? Okay, so look, here's the radius. If I were to square the radius, that's this. That means I'm going to take a square that has the length of the radius, right, and make a square. And obviously I did not draw that very well. But look, here's the radius. I'm going to make a square. Here's the radius. I'm going to make a square. And the radius again. Okay, so look, this is the, if I had uh, <coughs> r squared, this would be r squared. Okay, this would be r squared. Now look, this circle is four r squareds, but look, it's actually not, right? Like, it's not this part, or this part, or this part, or this part. So it's actually not four times r squared. It's a little less than four. And it turns out the number is pi. It's 3.14 times this square, okay? So that's how the formula works. Now, just to... Um, kind of show you here, let's say, uh, let's just make this up. Let's just say I have a radius of two here. So r squared would be, so I would have pi times two squared, right? Now that would be two squared is four. So I can write the area as four pi, okay? Or what I can do, and it just depends, it'll depend on the situation. Sometimes you'll just write it as four pi. Okay, now that's considered an exact answer. This area is exactly 4 pi. Or you could do 4 times 3.14, and that'll give you a decimal answer. Now, now, that's not exact, but you can just round it to the nearest hundredth, 12.56. Look, I use these. Look, it, that's approximately 12.56. Now, I didn't give units. Let's say this was, I don't know, inches, right? That would be square inches. Okay, so you just have to read the directions on whatever problem. Sometimes it'll say give your answer in terms of pi. Sometimes it'll say round your answer to the nearest hundredth as a decimal. For here, I'm going to ask you to do both so that that way you have the capacity to do both. There is a pi button. So like, look, I could do four pi. Okay, and notice I'll get like a similar answer. Like this would technically round to 12.57. Technically, this is more accurate, but just read, again, read the directions because often it'll say like in... Let's say you're doing it in IXL, it'll say like use 3.14 for pi, and then that's what you'll do. All right, so let's do one example. This is area equals pi times 5 squared. Okay, so that means the area is 25 pi, right? So that's one way to put it. And you could also say the area equals approximately, okay, whenever you're doing, whenever you're using pi and you're putting in 3.14, right, or whenever you're rounding a number at all, you're going to use approximately. Now notice, look, I'm going to use 3.14. Please do not use the pi button. Okay, use 3.14. I'm telling you, like, that's what most programs will ask you to use. 78.5. Oh, and I forgot my units. Look, this is centimeters, square centimeters. This is square centimeters. Okay, so please do both answers. That way, whatever you're asked for, you're prepared to do.